Good afternoon, everyone. We're here with Tom Campbell and David Chartrand. Tom Campbell, a physicist, is the designer of the experiments that are being conducted on both the West Coast and the East Coast and in Canada. David Chartrand is leading the team in Canada on those experiments. Now, all of the team members are in constant communication with each other making sure that everything is in place and just right for the experiments to be set up and conducted. We have some exciting developments going on. Tom, would you like to say a few words to begin? First of all, I would like to apologize to our viewers that this has been a long time, too long since we have done an update. Partly that's because we've been kind of hanging on the edge of almost being there for a long, long time. So you kind of wait and say, well, in another couple of weeks, maybe we'll be there. And then it's another couple of weeks and another couple of weeks. And so here we are now, what, about five, six months past the last uh, time that we really gave a good update. And we're still close, but not quite there. And a lot of things have happened. In the process, um, mostly it has to do not with technical failure, although we've had some of that. It has mainly to do with process failure, getting the right people at the right time, staying long enough to actually get the job done. So this is just part of the frustration that one has in, I think, working with a university system. They march to the beat of their own drum. And our project is not the number one thing that the university is engaged in. You know, we are on the back burner and uh, a pretty far back burner, I believe. It's something they're working in as they can kind of a thing. So I, we really appreciate that they, that they are trying to work us in, but that doesn't make our project go very quickly. So, uh, with that, I don't think Farbod's going to make it today. So I'll let David go. And uh, if there's some things that Farbod might add, I may add them myself uh, afterwards. So over to you, David. Can you kind of fill us in on what's been happening at the Canadian University? Yes, uh, Tom. Um, so as you said, it's a, kind of a tale of frustration, uh, but we're making progress. It's just that we are moving at the pace of the university. So as you know, universities, you have sessions, uh, semesters, and, um, you know, uh, in, in Canada, the, our, our lead researcher uh, has to teach. He has his own research. So he has um, a couple of hours to spend on the actual project himself every week. So he needs uh, a group of students, uh, graduate students, undergrad students working in his lab on the experiment. So, uh, so this uh, summer... Uh, he got two students working full time on the experiments for the whole summer, uh, and he was supervising them. Uh, they made great progress, uh, but the, it's a really complex experiment, and I, I want to uh, emphasize that um, you know the Nobel Prize winners of 2022, <laughs> Alan Aspect, uh, Klauser, and Zellinger, they they were able to perform these experiments. Uh, it took them years, and they win a Nobel Prize for that. Um, so I, I, my point is that it's possible, but it, it's it's hard to calibrate and to, ma to make it happen. So, uh, for for example, this summer we had calibration issues. Um, you know, when we use uh, the BBO crystals, we have two crystals, and it really limits the amount of uh, entangled photons that we produce. Uh, for e each photon that we send to the crystals, we have like one billionth of them that actually splits into a pair of a polarized entangled photon and um, so this means that there's very very few photon in the system uh, we're talking about single photon here that actually perform the whole system uh, some collides on the slits some go through the slits on our, on our block through by, by the polarizers so the point is that there are very very few photons reaching the detectors and uh, this means that um, we need to uh, record data for a very long time so uh, figure out that uh, we first of all this summer we made the pattern the the setup longer to to narrow the pattern and because of that we need to to let the experiment run for the whole 
weekend. So be, just to collect the data to get the single um, uh, double slit uh, interference pattern, we let the setup run the whole during the whole weekend to collect enough photon to start to see a pattern. Uh, so this takes a lot of time because every week we do the setup, we record during the whole weekend, we come back on Monday, we look at the data. Oh, and then there's an issue. You know, the, during the weekend, the laser was shooting the lens for so long that the lens burned in the middle. So, oh, we need to change the lens, find a lens that will uh, survive that, that process and exposure to the laser to, for such a long time. Um, so we need to order a new lens, put a new lens, record the data. And even like the activity in the university, like, uh, you know, uh, during the, the, the mornings or during the, uh, the, the day, just people walking around, it affects, it creates turbulence in the, the data collection. So it's really a challenge of, of optimizing the setup. Um, so right now we have a lot of great um, uh, ideas on how to optimize setup. We have a new lens that we ordered that we just received last week. And we have a new full-time lab technician uh, that uh, we are hiring that will work full-time. So th this time it won't be a student, it will be a lab technician trained in uh, optics. So we hope that with that person uh, that will be there full time, we'll be able to uh, optimize the results. But it's a long struggle, uh, but uh, we will make it happen. Just a matter of time. Sadly, it's uh, way longer than uh, expected. Okay. Now for, for Farbot, I'll kind of give his report. Uh, we have a, a consultant for Farbot, and I think we mentioned that before. And this consultant, uh, comes off the East Coast, and he has taken an interest in this experiment. He's not just been coaching Farbod with his experience, because he's very experienced in this type of experiment. And he's set up many of them and done them, so he is very experienced here. And he's been coaching Farbod, but Farbod's been struggling with it. Uh, he also has the problem with a, a very difficult uh, setup where people, um, uh, walk by and somehow the, the the system comes out of alignment just from the vibrations of the of the students you know walking by in the hall so it is a challenging difficult experiment but anyway this person now has gotten kind of hooked on this experiment and is doing it themselves so that's why we added a third place where the experiment's being done so he's doing it at his university and and uh, we have you know, David doing it at a Canadian university, and of course, Farbod in Southern California. So we're, uh, we're hoping that uh, this will, you know, produce results in the near future. Uh, the professor on the East Coast was pretty close to getting a working experiment. He had some very good looking data, but it wasn't really the final experiment. It was just kind of leading up to the final experiment. And uh, we'll see. With luck, we could get a breakthrough in, in two or three weeks. With bad luck, it may be four or five months. It just is hard to tell with an experiment that is this difficult. And none of us, including the professors involved, had any clue that this experiment was going to be this difficult. You know, we had mostly people, uh, even the two physicists that are very familiar with this kind of work and had done these kind of experiments before, they initially looked at it and said, oh, that's not going to be so hard. And now when you hear them talk, they're saying, that's a really hard experiment. They've, they've changed their minds completely now that they've actually tried to set it up and do it. It seems to be a lot harder than it looked. So we are still at it. And hopefully we're still making progress. It uh, is just taking a lot longer than any of us hoped. So bear with us, folks. It's not that uh, you know we've quit working on it or anything. It's it's going forward. It's just taking a lot more time than anyone suspected. Well, thank you, Tom and David. These reports are very encouraging. Some exciting news, and I feel that we will have some results fairly soon. Thank you so much for these reports.